podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. is Tech News Today from Tuesday, March 22nd, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free 14-day trial, go to Squarespace.com slash TNT. And by GoToMeeting, business travel can kill your company's profits, so do more, save more, and travel less with GoToMeeting for your free 30-day trial. Visit GoToMeeting.com slash Tech News. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Jason Hell. And joining us from across the vast Atlantic Ocean, including the the wide Sargasso Sea, Mr. Nate Langson, uh, editor at Wired.co.uk. Hi, Nate. Hi. How's it going? Uh, we are doing well. Thanks for joining us again, man. It's good to have you back. Hi, Nate. Thank you. Hey, sir. So, uh, how are things <laughs> over in the UK? Uh, How's life, bad. Nate? Start at the beginning. Yeah, so. uh, for the beginning. Well, it's uh, it's been fairly warm. Uh, everyone's still very English, and uh, apparently there's a wedding happening next month, so I will be leaving London for that. <laughs> you're gonna get out. You're gonna get out of town for the royal wedding. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It's it's gonna be the hell on earth. I hear there's gonna be campsites, and it's bad enough. It's bad enough walking over like Westminster Bridge when it's just sunny, but when there's you know a royal wedding, I am going. Far, far away. Can't you come up with some sort of He's unauthorized He's souvenirs? He's going to take all these photos. Yeah, I could, I could see you great. like out there hawking like you know, cheap Why? knockoff. They're, they're your national treasures, Nate. Wedding programs or something. Wonderful yeah, couple. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just not, I'm just not buying it. It's, I'm not a big fan of uh, of weddings at the best of times. So royal ones. <laughs> nah. Maybe you could protest on behalf <laughs> of the, the restoration of, of the Stuarts. I could do, but I'd rather just go away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got lots of news to get to, so we should probably uh, start it up. Amazon launches their long-anticipated app store today with 3,800 apps uh, for Android. You uh, you go to Amazon.com slash App Store, and they've got a video that will show you how to install it on your Android phone because you have to install their app store in order to get the apps. Uh, did you do it, Jason? Uh, yeah, I did, actually. And, I mean, it didn't. The video makes it seem like it, it's a totally complicated process, and there are many steps if you don't already have your your Android phone set to um, allow unknown sources, which is kind of the toggle box that is required in order to install anything uh, from the Amazon App Store, including the store itself. Mm. So for me, I already had it checked. It was a piece of cake. So I downloaded eating, yeah. it, ran it. But if you don't, you're going to have to go through a couple of steps to get there. Which yeah, I've heard that's from other folks. They send you a text message, yes. right? And yeah, you, you get a text message. You can click on the link, and it pretty much, you know, you, you kind of, it, it prompts you the entire way. So it's easy to kind of figure out. But I can imagine new users of Android getting kind of confused by it. Uh, with the new Android App Store, you have uh, a free app a day yes. uh, that that they're they're handing out. You get Angry Birds for Android. Mm -hmm. I, I heard the sound of Angry Birds Rio coming out of uh, my this, wife's this Nexus. This is the Android exclusive as well. Yes. So you know this is this is the only place that you can get Angry Birds Rio. For I mean, well for for, for Android. Android. I mean, Android. iOS has has its own app, but that's kind of interesting considering the Angry Birds is like the phenomenon that swept the globe. And unlike most apps. Stores, uh, Android or Amazon gets to set the price. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, for example, if uh, if you're an app developer and you submit your app to uh, Amazon's uh, app store and you say, I want it to be $1, I guess Amazon has the chance to agree with you that you agree that it's a fair price. And then they'll make 70% or, uh, or I'm sorry, the developer will make 70%, you'll make 70% um, on each download. And if Amazon decides to make it free for a day, then you make 20% off the, that original recommendation of a dollar. So it kind of, you have to be, uh, the developers, you want to set a realistic price, I yeah. guess. You don't have control over your price in the Amazon store. Although like they don't would. they don't really, at least uh, haven't gotten into yet. If you say, I want my app to be $4.99, and Amazon's like, well, I don't think so. Have you played around with this, Nate? I don't because I actually don't have an Android phone. Um, but I think it's really interesting. And, and unfortunately, it's also not available in the UK. 
Uh, yeah, um, so it's U.S. Want... only, actually. That, that was kind US of mean only. for me to ask you that. <laughs> yeah, but but there are a couple of things I find really interesting about this. Um, firstly, is that Amazon is going to be reviewing every app before it's posted to the App Store. So you can't just put your app on sale. It has to be you know vetted by Amazon and, and to make sure it doesn't contain malware, which obviously is... Um, you know, not the case for traditional Android apps. Um, but as well, you can test drive these apps within a web browser. Yeah. And Amazon is using its uh, EC2 uh, cloud service to let you play a live version of any app, or not any app, actually, I think some apps, but not every single app, um, I, kind like, of in a web environment. I'd like to... I'd like to see that in action because yeah. there are certain apps where you think that would be great, just a little, you know, video preview and other apps where I, I don't think I'd have any better sense until I was actually able to to play around and manipulate it myself. I've been clicking through the market for the last you know couple of minutes and I can't find a single one that'll let me uh, test drive it and put oh, it up really? in a video. Yeah. So it's a capability that they'll, yeah, the developers will just have to take advantage yeah. of. Now, the other yeah. thing is uh, MacObserver.com reports that in the, in the terms of service or in, in the restrictions, Amazon notes uh, that some apps will only work on Android device that has root level permissions. You should only download these apps if you are certain the device is rooted. Amazon.com does not encourage you to root your phone. So, okay. Wait a minute. So this I'm is, confused. I'm confused, too, because Amazon is saying, here are apps that we are offering you. We're curating them. We just talked you about that. You just need to root your device, and we don't suggest you do that. Why Why would Amazon... I don't know. Allow, I, there's something we're missing here. Like, why would... Is this just Amazon putting legalese in to cover their ass in case some root, yeah, root sounds friendly like that app to me. sneaked in somehow? Because there are... I mean, some of the, the biggest selling apps in the regular Android app store are root apps so uh, titanium backup for example backs up your entire phone it's one of the most you know one of the higher selling apps so it would kind of be strange for them to not offer those because okay. to a certain group of people the, the people that do root their phones those are like at the top so you know? amazon kind of has to do this in order to compete, compete with the marketplace with that's the missing piece android users who who want an actual app store that's helpful to them yeah at the same time you figure the uh, the Amazon user base in general, let's say that you got your first Android phone and you're like, I'm already an Amazon user. I, I like Amazon. I want to support them. Are you going to get confused about rooting devices and download yeah. something nefarious and screw up your system? And, and I think that's when, when I've kind of taken a look at this and seen how they've done this, that's where I think the sticky part kind of comes into play. If you have to check the box that says, allow you know uh, non-market items to be installed they've put that in there as a security android it's in android as a security measure so that right. you don't install an app that might you know do something nefarious to your phone but in order to use the android app store and install anything you get from it without a huge workaround you have to open up that hole so for someone who doesn't know that could be opening up a security hole should you uncheck that after you install the amazon app store you could but then i tried so i did that uh -huh. and i downloaded something from the app store and and tried to install it, and because from it's the not, Amazon from the store. Amazon App Store, and, be, and because it wasn't coming from the actual market, it so warned you have me to again. I have check. to check it nah. in order to install it, then uncheck it. Well, so. the good news is, if you have an AT and T phone, you can't uncheck yeah. uh, or check that You're because that option that. doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, and that's another uh, statement on the uh, getting started with the Amazon App Store. AT and T Wireless does not support the purchase of applications from the Amazon App Store, uh, so you're out of luck if you got an AT and T phone or tablet. Uh, that runs for, Android. For now, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, they for said now, that they they're working, working with AT&T. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. But yeah. why do, I mean, so what's the restriction now? AT&T doesn't, doesn't allow that checkbox to load uh, because that's an extra security measure. Yes. Don't even allow users. Yeah, we'll allow do it for them. you. We'll take care of you. And AT&T is not the only carrier who imposes those restrictions. As far as I know, they in are. In the U.S., I think they might be. Um, I thought Verizon I don't, I, was as well. No, Verizon's very open. Really? I'm, yeah, I'm on Verizon. Uh, no problems there. Uh, I stand corrected. Yeah. The final restriction is using the term App Store, <laughs> but this one's not coming from Amazon. It's coming from Apple, uh, who are engaged in a heated battle with Microsoft over the trademark and have now filed suit against Amazon for using the term App Store. We've covered this before, but just, just to note, uh, Amazon came out with the name App Store. Now, now they're oh, in Apple's Amazon's sites. Oh, but Amazon's App Store is all one word, uh, so totally it's different. different. Um, I think that Amazon, I, 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 I can't imagine that they didn't see this coming. I guess they either figure they've got a leg to stand on or... 
they at least we, just yeah. don't really care to go through the process of We've, fighting with Apple over this? We had a long attention? discussion about this on a previous show, and it's essentially the idea of whether you can trademark a generic or not and whether the term App Store is yeah. a generic or not. And Apple says it's not a generic. And, you know, there are plenty of Even examples. they've of, used it to refer to other companies' yeah, App yeah, Stores. Exactly. What, what should it be called? The Amazon... It should be called the App Store because that's what it is, and yeah. it's a generic. I think it's Agreed. silly for Apple to to do that. Apple I'm, I'm uh, does have App Store listed on names. its uh, on its trademark site, though, as a as a service mark um, that it has a trademark for. So they've for, uh, they've they've done their paperwork essentially. Yeah, it's it's on their trademark list on their website as one of the things um, that they're listing as having some kind of ownership over. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where this one goes because, of course, when you speak App Store doesn't matter that he doesn't have a space. You still say the same thing. So yeah. um, who knows? The CTIA show in Orlando, Florida, kicked off this morning with some fireworks. They were supposed to have all four leaders of the four major carriers in the U.S. Uh, for mobile devices on stage. But T-Mobile bowed out, claiming they had a lot of homework to do. Mm -hmm. And they were a little hungover. No, they didn't they say they were slept. hungover. But they said they had extenuating work circumstances. In other words, they didn't want to be on stage with AT&T Wireless President Ralph De La Vega talking about the fact that AT&T is going to own their ass in a, in a year. Uh, but AT&T Wireless President Ralph De La Vega, along with Verizon Wireless CEO Dan Mead and Sprint CEO Dan Hesse, uh, all took the stage in a meeting of the titans. Uh, of course, the dominant part of the conversation was AT&T acquiring T-Mobile. De La Vega said his company's interest in T-Mobile is about spectrum and expanding coverage of 4G LTE services, to which Dan Hesse had a nice response. Yeah, he goes, I thought you and T-Mobile already had 4G. Burn! Burn face. Of course, referring to T-Mobile already saying they have 4G because of HSPA plus 21 and uh, AT&T saying sometimes, although not usually advertising it, that they have 4G service with HSPA plus. This is why I am not going to use the term 4G unless I absolutely have to because it's meaningless. No, it, you have to discern between all of the different 4Gs that people are throwing around. Uh, uh, the Sprint CEO, Hesse, also said, you know, my opinion just doesn't matter when he was asked, hey, what do you think about this proposed so acquisition my of, of T-Mobile by AT&T? <laughs> That's for the FCC and, or, yeah. and the DOJ to decide, which is not true. After, he obviously yeah, well, has an opinion and obviously will state so. After the, 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 the uh, panel, he told reporters Sprint will file its concerns to Congress. So they, <laughs> he does have an opinion. Right. And it, apparently he thinks it matters or else he wouldn't bother filing it. Uh, Sprint also pays more to handset makers than any other carrier. And with one less carrier to compete for handsets, uh, it could mean that they get shut out even more by AT&T and Verizon. Uh, but as he said, we can afford to do a lot of things. There's no question that subsidies will increase as devices get more powerful. But the good thing for us is that with smartphones, there's a higher average revenue per user. So if devices get more expensive, they can charge people more uh, and then make more money. But uh, the other thing besides AT&T and T-Mobile was Spectrum. Verizon Wireless CEO Dan Mead said the underlying issue is about having a sound spectrum policy. Uh, we think there is a tremendous amount of competition in the market, uh, but we need more spectrum. And in fact, Federal Communications Commission Chairman Julius Janikowski, talking before the CTI panel, uh, said that the FCC is currently working to free about 500 megahertz of wireless spectrum to be primarily used for wireless broadband in the next decade. So they, yeah, and AT&T is using that to defend their acquisition saying we're buying T-Mobile because we get the spectrum that they've got and then we can use that to roll out 4G and that'll help the FCC in their broadband rollout of LTE to everybody. Yeah, they're doing it for the greater good. They're doing it for you, Nate. Uh, they're doing it for you, actually, really. Yeah, that's right. You, <laughs> um, they're really not doing it We don't really benefit right. that much. Not a bit. All right. Yeah. Other uh, big announcements at CTIA, all for the U.S. market uh, because the CTIA is sort of after the Mobile World Congress, where right. the big announcements come. It's uh, Orlando's, where they all are. Isn't yeah, it? so Samsung uh, re giving a little more information about the 10.1-inch Galaxy Tab that they announced previously in Barcelona and introducing an 8.9-inch Galaxy Tab, fitting nicely between its 7 and 10-inch You know, tabs. Nate, Nate pointed out uh, before the show that these are, what, uh, 1.2 inches apart from each other? That's not a big difference as far as the tablets go. What, what, is the, what is the reason that they would be so close in size? Nate? It's a very good question. I actually don't have an idea. 
Um, I, it surprises me that they've gone for two sizes so close when, you know, the 7 point, or is it 7.1 or 7.0? Seven inch, anyway, the original Galaxy Tab. You know, the divide between a seven and an eight point nine or a ten point one would have been much better. You know, if you walk into a store and say, "What well, do you want, the little one or the big one?" Then the choice is obvious. Whereas with this one, it's like there's an inch difference. I don't get it. And I don't they're point five millimeters thinner than the iPad too, so now they can claim they are the thinnest tablet. I don't understand Wait, why can't they just call it the nine and the ten inch? Exactly. I mean, I un I understand. Well, they can call it that. Well, why don't they? They do. Well, Oh, actually, I think you're right. The Galaxy is the 10.1, but yeah. I mean, yeah. essentially... I mean, I understand they're, that they're being literal, but it yeah. doesn't really roll off the tongue. Well, it's, it's like, why do you call anything anything? You know, why do you call... <laughs> well... Such a you, great question. They're, why, they're, why, why is the Samsung SCHI 510 LTE phone called the SCHI Because they don't know how to come up with catchy names. Actually, they're going to call it the Droid Charge when it comes out on Verizon. That's uh, better. At least that's the rumor. But then why call it the Charge? Because it's a one All word. Charge. It's not charge point nine. Why well, call it ESPN? It doesn't mean anything. Oh, Tom. It's nothing about sports. You're just being a contrarian. No, I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, I, I think what they're doing here is they're like, gosh, there's so many names out there. There's the iPad 2 and the Playbook and, uh, and all this stuff. We're just going to call it the Galaxy Tab. And instead of saying it's the Galaxy Tab 2 and the Galaxy Tab 3, we'll, we'll use those numbers because they happen to be around. Now, what what happens when they come out with the, uh, the next rev of the 10.1, the 10.1? V, V2? The 10.1B. Yeah, right. B like, stroke 7. Where do they go from there? Uh, Galaxy uh, Tab 8.9 inch uh, will be available in the summer. They haven't given it a definite date. 16 gigabyte option is $469. 32 gigabyte, $569. The 10.1 inch uh, Wi-Fi, these are the Wi-Fi versions, will be available June 8th. Uh, the 16 gigabyte version, $499, 32 gigabyte, $599. There is supposedly a 64 gigabyte too, but I didn't see any pricing information for that. Both of these have a one gigahertz dual core processor, the TouchWiz UI layered over Android 3.0. Uh, and there should be, in addition to the Wi-Fi versions, HSPA Plus, WiMAX, and LTE versions down the road. And they all have a 1280 by 800 resolution. Let's take a quick break and uh, thank our sponsor, Squarespace.com. They are the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For instance, Sarah, if you want to rail against the stupid naming of phones, you could start stupidphonames.squarespace.com. I could. And, like, the time I'm taking to do this ad. Maybe I will. Why is Tom such a contrarian? Squarespace.com, and it'll be a photo gallery. <laughs> no, you're wrong, Tom. <laughs> Squarespace.com. It could happen right now. Anyone in the audience could do that and find so many examples. Uh, all inclusive service includes modules to build your website. You can import it from movable type and type pad. You can build forms, collect email addresses from people so you can send them back uh, notes and updates. You can add Flickr, Twitter widgets, Google Maps. All kinds of good stuff. Try it out absolutely free. Go to squarespace.com and sign up for a free account right now. There's no credit card needed. Uh, so whatever crazy idea you have, you can try it out for 14 days. See if you like Squarespace. I think you're going to like it, and you're going to want to keep the account because it's so easy to use, and it's so robust. Check it out, squarespace.com slash TNT. I use it for forecast. We use it for sword and laser. It's, uh, it's darn handy to have around. All right, more announcements coming out of CTIA Sprint. Uh, good timing for them to say, hey, we got we got tons of announcements here, too. We got some good phones we're coming with. They are making the HTC Evo 3D official. It is a 4.3-inch glasses-free 3D phone. So we've talked about the LG 3D phone, uh, the Optimus 3D, which is also, I think it's the Thrill on AT&T. Uh, this is the Sprint HTC version of that 1.2 gigahertz processor, YMAX, of course, uh, two five megapixel cameras. So you can do 3D video uh, and there's a flash as well as a front facing 1.3 megapixel camera support for 1080p video playback with an HDMI out and Android 2.3 with the HTC Sense UI. Do you want a 3D phone? Anybody? I, nope. I'm not dying for one, uh, but I can see where Sprint um, would really hope that people are impressed especially since Sprint wants to take a little bit of the limelight back from some of the big news this week. It's like, look, 3D phone, people. It's awesome. We Check have an out. exclusive. We are not out of the race here. We are the only ones with the HTC 3D phone, for goodness sake. And it's cool. We can afford stuff. We're still in the running. 
I, f- I feel like we're at the same place now with 3D and the phones that we were a year and a half ago with front-facing camera. Where now all these phones are coming out with front-facing cameras just kind of built in. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like they're, they're, they're on par, but just a couple of years. 3D! I, I wouldn't mind 3D if, if my phone came with it. Sure, why not? Yeah, I, I yeah. I, you know I, I think mean? it's not a deal breaker for me by any means, but right. sure, if it's in the if, phone that I want, it's the new front facing camera. Where yeah. it's, it's just in there. It's you might the not even word. really utilize it, but yeah. if, if you if you didn't have it, you'd be like, what? What is this feature phone without yeah. all my stuff? Uh, the HTC Flyer from Mobile World Congress also got a rename and a uh, Sprint version. Uh, this is a, uh, going to be called the Evo View 4G. It's a WiMAX tablet, 7-inch, 1024 by 600 Android, 1.5 gigahertz processor, uh, 5 megapixel rear camera, 1.3 front-facing camera, uh, and, of course, the Sense UI. It's going to ship with 32 gigabytes of storage sometime this summer. So another Android tablet to throw on the fire. <laughs> there, there's too many Android tablets. There, there's, there are a lot. I don't know how to tell them all apart anymore because they all seem about the same, don't they, Nate? Uh, well, this one's got a 1.5 gigahertz processor, so that's a little bit cool. nicer. Yeah, you know that's that's quite nice. I mean, the seven inch again. It's that it's that weird uh, it's that weird mid ground. Steve Jobs doesn't like it. Uh, Samsung's gone up to what is it 8.1? All these numbers, uh, 8.1 inches. Kind of a really weird sort of uh, size, but this looks pretty cool. I oh, like it. Uh, this- we're not going to get it because it's on Sprint and. Well, you'll get the you'll get the UK. HTC Flyer version of it, probably. Oh, uh, well, that's true. And yeah. that has a, a stylus. Actually, both of these have a stylus. A stylus. Could it bring back the stylus? Yeah. <laughs> Two thousand and six wants its its accessories back. You you said um, and it has a stylus, like you were dangling a carrot in front of yeah, Nate. Nate's like a stylus. What year is yeah. it? How long I have I been? I saw a guy on a train the other day using a stylus with his phone, and I I actually felt sorry for him. You know, not because I felt that not having a stylus was like so much better, but it's because using a stylus is so much worse. You know, just use a phone that doesn't have a touch screen if you have to use a stylus. Anyway, I'm I'm being too just Although much in this cleaner. case in this case a stylus would be an addition to yeah. the touch screen. Yes. So that yeah. could be that's cool. It's not as and if it's going to draw back on this, which you need a stylus for, I guess, now and again. Um so I don't know. It looked pretty quick, pretty pretty, pretty. It's, it's very oh, pretty. Goodness. T-Mobile also announced some collector's <laughs> items. Uh these are T Mobile phones that you'll be able to use for at least a year before AT&T buys T-Mobile and shuts down all their towers. Uh, T-Mobile announced the T-Mobile G2X, uh, pretty much identical to the LG Optimus 2X, but it has plain Froyo, so there's no there's no uh, overlay on the graphic UI. Also, it supports HSPA+, uh, which is a little bit different. Uh, they also announced the Nokia Astound, the soon-to-be-deprecated Symbian OS, and T-Mobile coming April 6th for 80 bucks. So in a year, you'll be able to say, not only do I have a useless T-Mobile phone, but it has Symbian on it. Yes. Everything about that is just kind of, I don't know, too little, too late. It it all just seems so sad. T-Mobile also announced network expansion plans for 2011. (laughs) Uh, The company announced the first three cities uh, that will see 42 megabit per second HSPA+. plus. So HSPA plus 42 coming to New York, Las Vegas, and Orlando. And they will be joined after that by Chicago, uh, the suburbs of New York City, uh, including Long Island and northern New Jersey. And that rollout will end just in time for AT&T to take over T-Mobile. I wonder, I, I, I think AT&T will just take these 42 megabit per second HSPA plus and roll them into their current service. No, they won't because these are on a different bandwidth. They'll, they'll probably shut them down eventually and make you take a new phone. Hmm. It just kind of takes the wind out of the sails of this announcement, doesn't it? Well, but this when we talked about this yesterday, I mean that that this is inevitable. Certain phones are just gonna yeah, but it's stop a, it's being... like we talking about it yesterday in the abstract was one thing. Talking about it today when T-Mobile was like, "Hey, we got new phones," and I you're know. like, "Yeah." Well, but okay, so you figure. I mean, the phones have been made. The phones have been shipped to them anyway. They've got to roll they gotta them out. Do them. They yep. got to sell as many as possible. What are they <laughs> going right. to do? Just be like, this might make us look stupid. Let's just get come rid of them. Come out and go, here's our phones. Let's just throw them in the ocean. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they just, oh, they'll try to... got to sell them. Yeah, somebody's going to buy an astound. I don't know who. 80 bucks. You know, yeah. It's pretty cheap. It's good, exactly. good phone for a year. Yeah. Right? All right, Steve Jobs is going to court. Uh, lawyers for Real Networks. Remember them? Yes. We'll get two hours to question Steve Jobs as part of the antitrust case brought against iTunes. This dates back... To 2004, if you recall, think back. Uh, talk about think, think. Pretend you're using a stylus to put you in the mood. 
Uh, 2004, Apple was using DRM called Fairplay on all of its tunes. Yes. Uh, Real had come out with the ability to play Fairplay tunes on their music devices. Yes. They had cracked Fairplay. Right. So Apple came out with software changes to iTunes in October 2004 that broke the ability for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Real took them to court. Flash forward to 2011. They're finally getting around to deciding this. Oh, my gosh. This. this is the court case? The yes. same one? Judge Howard Lloyd of the U.S. District Court of Northern California said, yes, that Real Networks could question Steve Jobs for two hours, specifically about the software changes made in October 2004 and only about those software changes. How about, uh, oh boy, would I like to be a fly on the wall of that courtroom because Steve Jobs would be so annoyed to be answering questions <laughs> about something that is so far in the past. Yes, yeah, so hopefully... You know, uh, say, fair play, really, gentlemen? Are we really going to talk about can this? Can we stream this at district court, please? please? Just this once? Oh. Uh, Judge Lloyd said the court finds that Jobs has unique, non-repetitive, first-hand knowledge about Apple software updates in October 2004. Jobs is going to come in and go, I don't remember. That was a long time ago. Yeah, we've changed everything since then. Yeah, you know, we don't we even have DRM. DRM on music. I mean, date. Do you think that the, the upshot of this court case is that they'll tell Apple that they have to take DRM off, <laughs> off their music? It's just it, it it baffles me. And what it really smells of is there are some lawyers sitting out there who haven't been paid, and they want some money. You know, so um, that's why this is carrying on going on. And you know, I don't know. Will I, I mean, will Steve actually show? I mean, could he show? I suppose if he's forced to by the court. Oh yeah, he'll have to he'll show. Have to, yeah, yeah, but I don't know. It's just one of those things where, you know, there's been so much money spent on this legal battle that hasn't finished. And even though it's in the past, you know, it's like it's like trying to still sue someone who's dead. You know, what's the point, really? Yeah. Um, fair play is effectively dead. I mean, it's not dead on videos. They still use fair play on videos. But this specifically targeted music and music only. Um, so it, it's just one of those things where there's some lawyers sitting around who said we haven't been paid for this and we spend a load of money to sue Apple. Uh, we need our money back. And um, I don't see it ending well for for real, that's for sure. You know, in all seriousness, though, the precedent that could be set here could have wide-ranging implications to the other implementations of fair play. So, in other words, if real were to win this case, then someone else could come and break fair play on videos or even on apps mm -hmm. and say, we're going to have a device that takes iOS apps and runs them in emulation and breaks fair play. Or we're going to have a device that takes the video that's fair play uh, protected and runs it on our Android device and then be able to defend themselves in court using the real case as a precedent. So that's there. there is a possible it's in it for outcome. others. I think the perhaps. reason my, my brain doesn't want to go there is I just don't believe that real is going to win. Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree. I, I yeah. just, yeah, it's it's hard to believe. 2004. Uh, the Google Authors Guild case uh, hasn't been dragging out quite as long as the real uh, Fair Play case, uh, but it has been in, in court for a couple of years. Uh, Google and the Authors Guild reached a class action settlement in mid-2009 uh, uh, saying that they would start a coalition called the Open Book Alliance uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, I'm sorry. The Open Book Alliance opposed this. They mm -hmm. would start a coalition uh, of the Authors Guild and Google to allow Google to digitize every book that they could come across. The Authors Guild had sued Google saying you can't do that because our authors in the Authors Guild have copyright interests and, and you're out there copying their books and putting them online. The class, the amended settlement agreement between the two, the ASA, uh, would allow Google to scan any book it wanted mm -hmm. and then give a little bit of money if they sold that book in the Google bookstore to the Authors Guild that would go into a fund and the Authors Guild would disperse it to their members. Okay. Now, the reason the Open Book Alliance, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and Microsoft, among others, objected to this was because the Authors Guild was going to act on behalf of every author ever. So, for instance, if I hadn't already put my book on Google Books, which I have, so I'm, I wouldn't be affected. But let's say I hadn't. Let's say it's an orphaned work. I, I wrote a book back in the 70s, and, and, and people actually don't really realize that I have the copyright. And then Google goes and puts this book up and sells it in their bookstore and then gives Authors Guild the money. Authors Guild keeps that money unless I come to them. And say, hey, that's my money. And you're not part of the Authors Guild And at I'm all. not part of the Authors Guild. And then they get to keep the money if I don't show up and say anything what about it. What about deceased authors? Yeah, or their also estates. Also not a part of the Authors Guild. Any orphaned work, would the money would go to the Authors Guild. They'd hold it for a, a period of time and then go, 
Nobody showed up to get it. Guess it's our money now. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Which would happen a lot, I'm sure. The uh, the court case uh, has has been decided in New York Federal District Court rejecting that settlement. Uh, the judge said that while the digitization of books and the creation of a universal digital library would benefit many, uh, Google essentially doesn't get to exploit the entire world of books without the permission of the copyright owners. And in fact, the judge said, indeed, the agreement would give Google a significant advantage over competitors, rewarding it for engaging in wholesale copying of copyrighted works without permission while releasing claims well beyond those presented in the case. So because what happened is Google just started copying something. They got sued. And as a result, they get the right to copy everything and pay the Authors Guild and not pay the people. It's just we really need to fix copyright law because orphan works are a problem, but this is not the way to fix it. Right. There's really think, nothing Nate? else to say. <laughs> no, that was good. That was good, Tom. That was a, a tirade of sorts, but yeah. I, it was well thought out. It was. Uh, I imagine this is going to be uh, appealed. So we're we're not out of the woods yet. Because because uh, to give the other yeah, side Google of the story, Google says we're disappointed. Yeah, we're going to review the court's decision and then consider our options. So they're not saying like, okay, you guys, you Google got just us. wants to legally scan everything and make it searchable, right? And then with permission, make it available for sale. They, the Authors Guild started this by saying you can't even scan them and make them searchable. That's against the rules. And so Google's like, all right, we'll come to some sort of settlement. Yeah, do you want you. some money? Yeah. How about we give you a little bit of money? And the Authors Guild said, well, we will probably get a lot of money out of that cumulatively. All right, let's move on to the news fuse. Ah, prepare to act shocked. China has denied that they are responsible for the troubles Gmail users have had in the <gasps> country. No! I know. I thought they'd cop to it. <laughs> Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Zhang Yu said at a news conference, quote, this is an unacceptable accusation. So I'm sure Google is working on a more acceptable accusation. <laughs> the streets of Germany are now open to Google's all-seeing eyes, according to Deutsche Welle, uh, Berlin court has ruled it's legal for Google to take to take street level pictures, which is striking down a lawsuit brought on by a German woman who sued Google over Street View and cited privacy and property rights. <laughs> I mean, uh, Google has awarded $1 million to Georgia tech researchers so that they can develop simple tools to detect internet throttling, government censorship, and other transparency problems. Uh, the project aims to develop a suite of web-based internet-scale measurement tools that any user around the world could access for free that would help determine if you're being spied on or throttled or even just getting the access you paid for, of course. Yeah, that's kind of a cool thing to be like, hey, I'm, I'm paying for five megabits. Why am I only getting one? Mm -hmm. yeah. According to Brazilian news site Born Dia Sao Paulo, Taiwan-based Foxconn is likely to establish a production line specifically for making Apple products in Jundiai City, Sao Paulo State. Foxconn did not deny their consideration of establishing a third production line in Jundiai, where Foxconn has set up two production lines specifically for Apple and Sony products in the past. The New York Times paywall just got a little less permeable because Google is not going to be the only search engine to limit you to five free clicks into the news site. Times PR rep Kristen Mason that set, said after reviewing their options, NYT decided to extend the policy of five free clicks per day to all major search engines by the global launch on March 28th. I blame Canada. Yep, because they had they were trying all the ways around. Trying That's all the right. Yeah. Blame Canada. Poor Canadians. Uh, but it turns out that a few lines of JavaScript can bring the whole paywall tumbling down anyway. Uh, Canadian coder David Hayes has just released NYT Clean, uh, a bookmarklet that in one click tears down the Times' paywall by hiding a couple of div tags and turning page scrolling back on. So I guess the Canadians are back in the good graces, Sarah. <laughs> well done, Canadians. Yeah, can you're okay, Canada. You're good. You're cool. You're good in our book. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, actually that's really funny because apparently the text of every blocked uh, story mm -hmm. is in the source code. <laughs> so if you just do view source, you can actually read the article. <laughs> yeah. Might just you know just. That's probably going to change sometime some, soon. Yeah, I'm sure they're figuring it out. That's why Canadians are the beta testers. Uh, you know how Amazon allows you to lend your Kindle books? The Nook does this too. Yes. Uh, well, apparently they don't want you to use it much. Amazon has cut off API access from lending service Lendl.com, which allowed Kindle users to list 
the lendable books they had purchased for perusal by other users. And because Lendl doesn't offer any other services, the site has pretty much been taken down. Oh, that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Lendl. IBM said today it intends to acquire Las Vegas-based uh, Tririga for Tririga for an undisclosed amount, giving IBM software for managing a portfolio of buildings, including projects to improve building efficiency and lower carbon emissions. IBM said that it's part of its strategy to give corporations better ways to manage their facilities and equipment. Tririga's applications will be part of IBM's Tivoli Division of Management Software. Tririga, Tririga. One of those. Try is Riga. Be right. Try Riga. Okay. Yeah, try it. Why not? You'll you'll try Riga. Riga. Everybody else has. I love myself a good battery story. And uh, Paul <laughs> Braun, a professor of material science and engineering at the University of Illinois, Oski Wow Wow, uh, had, thinks they have developed a way for batteries to act more like capacitors, but still store a lot of energy. Uh, he says the system we have gives you capacitor-like power with battery-like energy because most capacitors store very little energy. They can release it very fast, but they can't hold much. Most batteries store a reasonably large amount of energy, but they can't provide or receive energy rapidly. This is a problem for electric cars, right? You want to fill them up with electricity. It takes right. forever to charge the damn battery. Mm -hmm. uh, so batteries equipped with the 3D film that they have created have been demonstrated to work normally in electrical devices while being able to charge and discharge 10 to 100 times faster uh, than their conventional counterparts. It's wonderful. This is uh, this is what's going to have to happen if uh, people are going to actually uh, be adopting this. I don't know why we didn't think of this, Nate. Uh, neither do I. It sounds like the uh, Excalibur of the battery world. All um, you, all, <laughs> yeah. All they did was coat a surface with nanoscale spheres. Yeah, I know. I mean, I actually who, had who could have thought it. of that? I've thought about it. I just haven't gotten around to it. You just never got around to uh, coding it and having them self-assemble into lattice-like arrangements. No, not yet. I was going to do that tomorrow. Uh, now you've been now you've been beaten. Yeah. Well, I'll right. just. That's fine. Freaking a lot. I didn't really care. Yeah. Anyway. It was wasn't that big of a deal. No. Right. It's just. Whatever. You know, it is a big deal though. Hmm. Wasting money. You yeah. Don't, you I don't, don't like. No. Money. I I'll, I'll waste time building. You know, nanotechnology for batteries. Can't afford to waste time, Lane. No. Time is money. You can't afford to waste time or money. Uh, and in fact, GoToMeeting, our other sponsor, helps you avoid that. You uh, you you can't afford to waste time driving, flying, all of those meetings. Get it out of the way with GoToMeeting. That, uh, that's why we are excited that they are sponsoring us. Uh, you can hold your meetings online. So if you have a meeting, you don't you don't fly out there. You don't you don't spend a lot of time on the phone trying to pantomime. You use GoToMeeting because you can then show your screen and and show your sales presentation, do your product demo, conduct your training session, collaborate on documents. Uh, just about any type of conference call can benefit from the folks at Citric to help you out. Citrix makes GoToMeeting and it's the easiest, most secure way to hold an online meeting. Uh, if you try your first GoToMeeting, it's going to set up in just a few seconds. $49 a month, you can hold as many meetings as you want, uh, but you don't have to pay a thing to try it out. You can try it out in seconds right now for free by visiting GoToMeeting.com slash tech news. So if you got a meeting coming up, Nate, that you want to you wanna set up, Go to uh, meeting .com I, I had this news. morning I could have done with doing that for, to be honest. See, now next time you, you'll be able to set it up, uh, try it out for free. Go to meeting.com slash tech news. And we thank them for their support. You know, someone in, tech the, news today. someone in the chat room suggested Steve Jobs just go to meeting into that Real Networks courtroom. Well, that's a good idea. Why can't people do that? Let me show you why Fair Play was Let's you know, go software Let's go to meeting update. in order yeah. for jury duty. Yeah, go to meeting, mm, go to deposition. Perfect. Wouldn't that be great? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, won't the government support this? We should bring it up. I think we should. I'm going to write my uh, councilman. In the meantime, let's move on to the calendar. All right. Well, we've got a birthday to celebrate, and it's a big one. Happy 80th birthday to William Shatner, and happy Talk Like William Shatner Day to everybody I else. I don't know what you mean, Sarah. That was okay. You don't like William Shatner. It's not that I don't like William Shatner. I'm not sure why he has become such a meme if that's an appropriate way to describe the Shatner thing. You know, he's he's hilarious. I, I think you're, are, are you still a little bitter because I got that song stuck in your head earlier? <laughs> yes. with the Captain Kirk is climbing the mountain. Why is he climbing the mountain? There, yeah, um, Nate shared a bizarre YouTube video with us before the show uh, to kind of prove to me how awesome William Shatner is. But it wasn't like, 
He said some funny things, I guess, and someone made a mashup song. I just don't, those are the things I don't really get. Okay. He's great. I just don't get the like, Shatner's so crazy. You love crazy. the Shat man. And the Shat my dad says, or whatever <laughs> that, that show is. On Never CBS. seen it. Yeah. I uh, heard it wasn't that good. I'll stick with the Twitter account. My ship, my crew. <laughs> Once copy and paste, faster start and resume time. So happy um, 80th birthday, William my Shatner. My Windows Phone 7. Yeah, it's like he's sitting right across from me. It's so <laughs> weird. Microsoft begins distribution of no dough update to Windows Phone 7 handsets. Copy and paste, everybody. Tomorrow, uh, the 21st, HP shareholders will vote on new board members. Uh, because, of course, they were not happy with the board members already chosen. Northeast Linux Fest is happening on April 2nd. This is going to be at the, I hope I'm saying this right, Worcester State University. I know people from Massachusetts are probably cringing, but I think it's Worcester, Massachusetts. It's going to start at 10.30 a.m., and the website, if you're interested, is northeastlinuxfest.org. Apple slinging the iPad 2 to 25 more countries this Friday and even more next month. They uh, they announced that at their at their iPad 2 announcement and they're keeping their word. And the BlackBerry Playbook uh, launching April 19th. Pre-orders start at $4.99 for the 16 gigabyte model. Tom, you must be excited about this. Pre-ordered. Oh, you're you're already He's all already in. done. You're, it. you're yep. on top of it. Yep. Um, um, I'm not telling you anything you didn't already know. Tom for April 19th. Uh, has has been a has been a playbook enthusiast at least uh, up until yeah. uh, this is from what you've seen so far hey, it's 30 day return policy right mm. i'm going to try it out you always say that about everything and then i never return anything right. i know you said that about google tv too yeah still sitting in my house yeah we well, you know we use but it you know, as the netflix machine in our bedroom it's going to be a software update and it's going to change your life one of these days I'm sure of it. Right, straight to the moon google tv <laughs> all right give us a call 260 tnt show is our phone and you can leave us a voicemail like these folks did. Uh, first one is an AT&T T-Mobile handset dilemma. Hi, guys. Mike Mathia, Wichita, Kansas. I wanted to mention something about the AT&T and T-Mobile merger, about how the T-Mobile headset handsets will end up being discontinued because of Spectrum. Remember, this happened before. This happened when the Sprint and Nextel merger happened. Nextel phones eventually got faded out, and they were replaced with Sprint phones. So this isn't the first time this has happened. This is uh, just on a bigger scale. Anyways, just my thoughts. So you're saying all of this has happened before mm -hmm. and all of it will happen again. Mm -hmm. It will all happen again. Keep your day job, Lane. Thanks. That's what they all told me in the chat room when I did it. <laughs> Except they said merit instead of Lane. Uh, and then our next caller uh, is responding to our plea from yesterday to uh, have someone uh, record shows from Twit to CD for Lieutenant Commander Adam Klein, who's uh, serving overseas. And it's it's someone who's been looking for this guy for a while. It's a reunion. This is awesome. Listen. Hey, this is Jeff from Columbus, Ohio, and I'm uh, just catching up on yesterday's TNT from uh, Monday, March uh, 21st. And I heard you mention uh, Adam Klein, Navy pilot. I went to high school with that guy, and uh, if he wants me to burn any kind of stuff for him and send it off to him wherever he happens to be in the world, I would be more than happy to do it. And Adam, if you hear this, reach out. Give me a call, brother. Let me know how everything's going. I haven't talked to you in ages since it's Molly's wedding, so... Talk to you later. Thanks, TNT, and uh, have a good one. TNT bringing people together right. and I actually, in the awesomest of ways. Uh, Jeff also emailed, and I forwarded the email to Adam, who's already responded and said, "Long lost friend, send him my information." Are they? Are these men not on Facebook? I know. Give me a call. <laughs> TNT. How do you do that? Facebook for the Facebook deprived. <laughs> right. That's true. If you uh, if you've got a missed connection, uh, give us a call. We'll start a new at our Google Voice number and we'll, missed tech connections. We'll, we'll, we'll find your man, or woman. And thanks to everyone, Dog. we got overwhelmed with people yeah. who were willing uh, to burn stuff to CD uh, for Lieutenant so Commander cool. Klein. Thank you so much. He's well taken care of now. We have like three or four different options now with his long lost friend involved. Uh, some folks who actually are in the military and can ship things for free. So really appreciate uh, everybody being willing to totally. help out. Even if we didn't get back to you, there were too many to respond to uh we got your email and we really appreciate it you guys are good people on to the email from tristan in elgin illinois says this is regarding the story about at&t sending notices to those who use unauthorized tethering methods there have been many posts in mac rumors and modmyeye.com from people who received the notice but claim they never tethered 
Their data usage is high because of Pandora and Netflix streaming on their iPhone over 3G. When these people called AT&T to inquire, the customer service rep said streaming on the iPhone itself is considered tethering? This goes against the definition of tethering, and it's ridiculous how AT&T is handling this. And now with their plan to merge with T-Mobile, and, and I'm afraid AT&T will continue to strong-arm customers. Uh, I don't know that this, we can't confirm that this is true. You know, obviously, I've, I've seen, I've gone and looked, and I see those posts that you're talking about, Tristan. Uh, if anybody has better evidence than just uh, forum postings, let us know. If this is true, my guess is it's customer service reps do this a lot of times on the front lines where they just say whatever they think will get you off the phone. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't mean that AT&T's policy is that streaming is tethering. They're just trying to get you to shut up. And in those cases, I heard Sarah do this yesterday on a Verizon call. You ask for the supervisor. Yes. Which is, I mean, I... I wouldn't say that he was just trying to get me off the phone, but he was definitely not giving me the answer that I thought I deserved. Yeah. So if you are one of these people and if at t has told you like, oh, no, streaming is like tethering. Thank you, sir. Can I speak to your supervisor? I mean, if, if that's not true. If streaming, I, I did uh, just recently switch over to Verizon, but if streaming was like tethering, then I should have notices from at t because I stream Pandora like hours out of the day, every yeah. day. On my phone. I have a feeling that some whatever way AT&T, if this is true, whatever way AT&T is detecting the tethering uh, flagged some people. And so when they said, I haven't been tethering, this is all I've been doing, the customer service rep was like, I don't know. Then, the, yeah, that's tethering. They're just, they're just trying to move you through the yeah. system. Yeah. They got to get to a certain number of calls that day. Well, you can't stream anything, sir or madam. <laughs> yeah, you that's can't. That's tethering. Well, using the data is tethering. <laughs> using the phone is tethering. <laughs> Did we not make that? It's in the... Did you make any calls? Oh, well, that's tethering. Yeah. You're tethered to the call. All right. Nate, uh, I hope this never happens to you, but thank you so much for being on the show. It's great to have you on again. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to be here, as always. Much fun. Let folks Much know uh, about what's going on at wired.co.uk. Uh, well, we have a podcast now, although we've had it since November, so uh, I would encourage anyone uh, listening to check that out uh, at wired.co.uk slash podcast. Uh, and follow me on Twitter, obviously. Uh, I am at Nate Langson. And um, there's probably a spelling on the screen or something. Um, and yeah, that'll do for me. All right. Uh, th and thanks for staying up late. We know it's uh, it's it's late into the evening for you out there. He's going to go play his drum set once he's off the uh, off the Skype chat with us. I'm actually going to go back and, and carry on playing Christ. Two, so that's what I was doing earlier. That's what I'll be doing in a bit. Um, it's not actually too late here now. I think we're recording earlier. Yep. Is that yeah, right? Is, for, for a change? short period of time until you do your time change. Yeah, we're an hour closer. Yeah. I, I feel that excellent. hour too. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks everybody if you're watching. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. You can give us a call 260 TNT show or send us an email TNT at twit.tv. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>